Good morning. Good morning. You all know I like to do things a little bit differently. I love to see the smiles on, on people's face, faces when I, I get up here. Randy daughter, he and I were last weekend together, and he was telling me about the time he visited here. I had forgotten he had visited, <coughs> excuse me, visited here. But he was telling me about how we do communion thoughts. Because most people, most congregations get up and just read the scriptures. But he said he, he really appreciated how we did it here. Because you get up and you explain and you express yourself. And that to me is very interesting because it helps us as deliverers. But it also helps those who are listening to fully understand what it is about what we do by taking communion. It's not just a ritual. It's something that we are commanded to do. So when we do that, with God giving him the glory, now we all can get something out of communion. Because I remember one time, there was a gentleman that came with me to church, and he said, I didn't get anything out of service. If you don't have anything to give, you can't get anything out. But anyway, but Randy also told me that they have the roof on the building. They, are, they still need some more money because when the roof leaks, what happens? You get damage on the inside. So they still have some, some damage on the inside that need to be taken care of. But, okay. Let, let me get on to, oh, one, one other quick question, quick thing. Nita Lagarde, who is in the bulletin, she finally went home yesterday. When I saw her, because she was with Randy and I and some of my relatives, she, she had already had surgery. She was cut from here to here to remove whatever was causing the problem. She finally went home. She's doing well and want to thank you guys for praying for her. But I don't know where they cut the other place, but I tell you, it was, I mean, but Philippians 4. I love Philippians because it talks about, or well, Paul talks about uh, joy. Joy is both passive and it's active. And I like Paul's stance on it because he takes the active portion of joy because when you are joyful you're going to express that joy and some people talk about I say some people uh, the overview for Philippians it is the most joyful book in the Bible coming from a, a, the pen of Paul being in prison how can he be joyful because he said, therefore, my fellow believers, whom I love and long for, my delight, my delight uh, and crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, my beloved. So how can he say that? Because you get down to verse 4, he starts talking about rejoice in the Lord always, and again rejoice, let your gentle spirit be known to all people. So we need to spread that joy, that love that we have to all people. Verse 7, he says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, stands God over your heart. So we need to have that joy and spreading that joy. And why can Paul say it, uh, you know, to rejoice? We should be rejoicing also. And why? Because God gave his son. Jesus died for our sins. He arose on the third day. And he said he was coming back for us. That ought to be joyful. When he's coming back for us, he went to prepare a place for us. And as, as we come together, as Christians, we should rejoice. Because in Acts uh, we find in Acts 7, he said, on the first day of the week, we are to come, uh, to come together to remember his death. Matthew 26, 26, he said, 
uh, this is my body which is given for you, for us, that we can have that, that joy, that we can really smile and have that peace with us that only the Holy Spirit, knowing that you, we have a place to go to when we leave this world. So let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you, we just thank you, we love you, and we praise you for all that you do. And dear God, as we get, uh, are ready to remember what you did on that cross at Calvary, that we can have that joy, that peace, that trans transcends all understanding, that we know that we have a Savior that is coming back for us. And as we remember this, remember that this day, we just thank you and we love you. We ask that you would bless this bread in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. Let's again pray. Dear God, again, as we come to you, we just thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross at Calvary. That we will have forgiveness of sins and that we will be with you when we leave this world. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you in your son's Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we normally would be passing a collection plate, but we don't do that. There are two places in the back door, by the back door, that you can leave your collection there. And I, I love you guys because, you know, looking at the bulletin, we have, we have a surplus, and I love that. <laughs> a lot of congregations that are struggling don't have a surplus and that, you know, struggling. So we need to thank God for that. And I appreciate the visitors who give and participate with us and come back over and over and over uh, and continue to give. And I, I love that. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. And dear God, as we come to you, we just thank you. We love you. And we know that you are there for us. You will take care of us, whatever the situation may be. Because like Paul said, rejoice again. And I said rejoice. And when we do that, we glorify you. We let people know that everything that we have, we don't own it. It belongs to you. So when we give back to the Lord, we show uh, our love that we have for him, but for others, because we give to, to various ministries. And we just thank you for that. And we just ask that you would bless those that are participate in those ventures that we have. And we just ask that you will continue to be with us, love us, and take care of us. In your son Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Chip is going to come up with, uh, with his goat. And uh, those that want to give to our kids to kids, Chip will be up front. 